mtazamaji wa kipindi chetu cha safari salama na mrekebo kutoka Jaure Mtoni Kampan. Leo hii tuko na mtaalamu wetu mwalimu wetu wa siku zote leo anatuletea madini mapya tunazungumzia ship construction and stresses. Karibu ni mtazamaji uendelee kunufaika na vipindi vyetu. Good morning uh, once again my name is Captain Consim Gawe from Azam Marine. Today we have a different discussion as compared to the previous one which we discussed about uh, the duties and responsibilities of uh, uh, deck officers, including the master. But today, we are going to discuss about ship construction and stresses. As we can see on the outline, when you're talking about ship construction, we have first to know what is a ship and how many types of ships do we have so that we can have, we can visualize, we can have an image of what we are actually talking about. When you're talking about a ship, a ship simply means it's a, it's, it's a, it's a large vessel traversing the oceans and uh, other navigable waterways, carrying cargo, passengers, or it can also be used in specialized missions like uh, defense, like we see the frigates, fishing, oil and gas exploration, all those, they need some kind of marine vessels. But when you are talking about ship building process, why do we call it a process? We call it a process because if you need to construct a ship, there is a number of issues to take into consideration. First of all, as a subject, we have to identify the key players. When you're talking about identification of key players, we say identification of key players. What do we mean? Who are involved in the whole process? Because it's not a single-handed process. It needs a multi-hand sort of process. It needs a number of stakeholders. The, the first, the foremost stakeholder is the owner who is placing order. Owner who places, places order to the builders. To the builder. This is the number one. Without the owner, without the buyer of the ship, we cannot have ship construction. We do construct ships because we have the owner. We have someone who needs to build a ship. Then, if we have the owner who places order to the builders, then we have the builders. The builders. When you're talking about builders, we mean the shipyards. Shipyards or dry docking, whatever. And uh, these builders, they have a number of personnel in it. There is a whole management, like for example, the managing director of that organization. We have the, the naval architects, we have the marine engineers, mechanical engineers, electricians. There is a number of people. When you're talking about the builders inside here, we have, say, the management. Management of that particular shipyard. We have the naval architects. Naval architects. We have marine engineers recruited marine engineers. We have um, mechanical engineers also. They are, they are required mechanical engineers. We have ETOs, electricians. We have plumbers dealing with pipes. We have uh, some carpenters also because there are some woodworks also to be, to be done on board ship, carpenters. And some other sand blasters and everything like that. So. That's why you can see how it is extending now. Because we are talking ship construction, we started with the owner, but we, we, then we talked to the builders, but the builders, inside the builders, these are just a, a few personnel. These are just a few personnel, there is more. Just to give you an image of what is, is going on in this industry. Then after the builder, we come to the classification society. Because when you're constructing a ship, <coughs> all the parts have to be certified and certificated. And that's why the classification societies, the classification societies, they always provide surveyors. Surveyors. To survey the ship from key laying to erection, to completion. They have surveyors, class surveyors. And these classification societies, of course, are non-governmental organizations putting standards for the construction of ships and the maintenance of these ships. And that's why you have to be, there has to be uh, an annual survey, an annual 
class survey. Every year you have to be surveyed so as to see that are you maintaining the class or you are. Although putting a ship into a class is not mandatory, but for business purposes, for commercial and uh, insurance purposes, if you class a ship, it means you are reducing the premium. Premium that the amount of uh, insurance payments you're going to pay to that company. And of course, commercially, your ship becomes uh, commercially viable. It is, it, is, it is impressing almost everyone that this ship is according to standards. And of course, the client is assured of getting to the destination safely, of getting the cargo to the destination safely. So the classification society is uh, of course, we have a number of classification societies. We have DNV. We have um, RINA, this one for, this dot, Det Norske Veritas for, from Norway. We have RINA from Italy. Registro Italiano uh, Navale, this from Italy. We have uh, Lloyd's Register, this from UK. We have German Register, this is from Germany. We have American Bureau of Standard, American Bureau of Standards is this one from uh, American Bureau of Shipping, this one from USA. We have the Chinese Classification Society. We have the Korean Classification Society. We have the Russian Classification Society. We have um, many more, more than 12, reputable. These are international and reputable. These are reputable international classification status. They put standards of construction and of course of maintaining uh, ships. So now after the builders, the, the, the fourth one is the maritime administration. Maritime administration. It's like TASAC here in Tanzania, like KMA in Kenya, like ZMA, Zanzibar, like SAMSA in South Africa, AMSA in Australia, etc. The, these ones are the ones are the regulatory, uh, the regulatory uh, the authorities. They are the ones making sure that safety compliance is achieved. Whatever, whenever the, the vessel is constructed under, under their flag, it has to comply with all international uh, requirements. So, they be carrying what, what is known as initial survey because when the vessel is first reconstructed, the survey carried out by the flag is what we call initial survey. So they be carrying initial survey from, from key laying to completion of the vessel. So all stages, they will come, inspect, survey, write a report, take photos, and of course compile a report. Then after the maritime administration, who next? Bankers. Either the owner might have taken a loan from a bank, probably NBC, because it's my bank or Amana. Or the builder can also take, can also take loan. The builder can be Songoro Marine or something, can take loan also to construct a vessel. So it can either the owner can take loan to go and construct a vessel, or the builder can take loan to construct the vessel. So bankers are also key players, and that's why when you're talking about blue economy, it's, it's, a, it's, it's too wide. And when you're talking about shipbuilding industry, it is also too wide because it involves a number, a, a big number of stakeholders. Then we come to the insurers because that thing has to be insured. The insurers, like NIC, you meet, you meet Mr. Mkayenge. <laughs> you meet Mr. Mkayenge <coughs> because Insurance uh, is always is always there just to bring you back to, to your position just before the, the disaster or before the, the peril. Because in case of something during construction, anything happens, then the insurance will cover that whatever the loss just to reimburse, to reinstate you to that position so that you should not suffer that loss. We have also uh, suppliers. These suppliers can be for shipbuilding materials. Suppliers can be supplying safety gears, like the helmets. Can be supplying stationery, etc. And uh, the eighth ones we call, uh, it's like, for example, if you're constructing a ship, it all depends where the site is. In most cases, during construction, 
the builders always collect some some d different personnel the world does some casual some casual laborers and whatnot all these they need to be accommodated so you need also to have accommodation so accommodation you can either establish yourself maybe on the site or you can hire a hotel you can whatever but you, they need to be accommodated but you need also to have where these people can get meals where can get meals food they need to eat the mamalishes uh, the mama and the babalishes all these are amongst the many stakeholders in the shipbuilding shipbuilding industry so if you paralyze if you paralyze this it means you are actually paralyzing the whole and of course all this since we started mentioning all those organizations they have a number of people the bank has a number of personnel employees you come to the maritime to the classification societies to the maritime administration to the builder for example alpha logistics seco they have more than 600 personnel there at seco more than 600 all these people depend they depend their daily bread on the uh, shipbuilding or dry docking activities so if you paralyze it it means more than 600 people those are the personnel employed and everyone has maybe five six dependents so if you multiply you can get thousands of personnel from this industry so this is amongst the industry to be to be uh, talked in, in, in capital letters because otherwise we, we, we are not actually talking of the economy if you are really talking of the economy this is the industry to be given top priority now we continue after identifying who are the key stakeholders in shipbuilding and of course you can include the hospital as well you can include the hospital or health centers we say health centers because during construction anything can happen someone can get injured can and the most importantly transport you can either have your own or you can hire so you can either have air because some some personnel will be coming for example you're constructing a ship there at Songoro Marine so someone from France from France must fly to Dar es Salaam to the site so we will catch a plane depending where it comes from maybe it's coming from the village he will take a horse or he can take a motorbike then to a bus station to the airport then to Dar es Salaam pick a tax to the hotel he's accommodated from the hotel to the site so transport can be air can be water can be rail can be road whatever all these they pay for because even these materials they have to be transported as well you need to take them from the supplier to your site so everything needs transport the personnel data services so these are the key stakeholders when you're talking about ship construction ship building industry you cannot avoid this these are the key we say key this is not the, the number is not uh, is not exhaustive you can mention as many as possible because you can everywhere here Mamalisha has some assistance also you can extend this and get more 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 just for for example when uh, Songoro Marine was constructing the TPA badges in Kela the whole Kela was vibed everybody was happy everybody was getting money because of those and of course you know ship construction does not take one day it's years maybe two years three years constructing one big ship so it means the whole period of two to three years people are just getting their daily bread from this source so it's, it's very important that uh, when we are discussing about this we have to know that uh, it's amongst the, the strong industries to be given top priority so after identifying the stakeholders now because we, we're just trying to bring the point home that uh, to know the essence of this industry and this is one of amongst the many amongst the many industries in the uh, in the blue economy this is just a tip of an iceberg there, there is many now after identifying the ship the, the, the key players then we come to shipbuilding materials ship building materials ship building materials depends on what type of ship you want to construct what type size and purpose of that vessel because we have fiber of course fiber and we have fiber reinforced uh, plastic we have glass reinforced plastic we have wood we have aluminium 
we have steel. Of course, this one for for small for small boats. Well, for small boats, that's what you cannot construct a container ship by fiber. When you put a container, it will all <laughs> break into pieces. Yeah, aluminium also for medium-sized vessels like the catamaran and. But when it comes to steel, this one is for whatever the size of vessel you need to construct. Again, these materials also, they need to be transported. But all these materials, I said, they depend on type of vessel you need to construct. We have different types of ships. We have the cargo ships. These cargo ships are further divided into about seven groups or seven types. We have first the general cargo. The general cargo, we have the container ships, we have the dry balkers, we have the tankers, we have the malt purpose, like those ones carrying other boats. We saw the Chinese, when they finished the Chinese project, one vessel came and picking all the boats and barges. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have the roller also. Car carriers, this is one. We have two, the passenger vessels. Pax vessels of different types. We have the crews, of course these ones are bigger, traversing the world. We have the normal passenger vessels like Mapinduzi. And we have the yacht, and of course, we have some other, we have the catamaran as well. Catamaran like those owned by Azam Marine and uh, Zanzibar Fast Ferries. And we have a third group of specialized vessels. Specialized vessels, these include the tugs. Tugs are specialized because they are only for certain purposes. They can either be harbor tugs, they can either be harbor tugs, they can either be uh, utility tugs, they can either be, of course, you can, utility can be towing, they can also, they can either be anchor handling tugs, they can either be offshore tugs, offshore whereby you have full DP system, the DP tugs, etc. Specialized vessel includes the fishing vessels because they are only for special purpose of fishing. You have the seismic, or we call the survey vessels, the research vessels, etc. All those are specialized vessels. So these are all. So the building material will depend what type of ship you want to construct and size. Depends on the one type of the ship you want to, co to construct, the size of the ship, and the purpose and the purpose of the vessel. So it will determine what kind of building material uh, you are actually looking for. Yes, we continue after identifying the shipbuilding materials and of course each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. Of course, it's beyond the scope of our discussion today. Today, we just, I just want to give you an overview of general ship construction, an overview. Uh, from from uh, a layman's point of view, for someone at least to have a, to have a, a, an idea of what is ship construction. When you're talking about ship construction, what is it about? But otherwise, ship construction is a very wide subject because all what we mentioned have to be discussed in detail. If you dis if you you mention a stent tube, it has to be discussed in detail. To, you put some sketches and all that. If you, you're talking about the stem, stem frame, if you're talking about the, the barber's bow, you're talking about the collision bulkhead, you're talking about, there is a lot of items to discuss about, but a general overview of ship construction, this is what uh, we, are, we are actually talking about. And of course, we are mainly concerned uh, with the industry itself, with the shipbuilding industry itself, and that's why we mentioned the, the processes of mentioning the stakeholders and, um, and all that. But otherwise, if you're talking about ship construction per se, you cannot mention the, the bankers and all that. You will only mention the parts which you're going to construct. But we mentioned all this because we are focused on the uh, on the shipbuilding industry, because now the, the government is talking about blue economy. So we have to break down all these things so that the politicians can at least understand when we're talking about shipbuilding. Because sometimes they only, they single out when you're talking about ship, ship, shipping industry, they only look at the seafarer. 
That's it. Most of these politicians, they are doing like that. They are looking for the seafare. But they don't know that affecting the industry is, effect, is also, if you, if you support the industry, you are supporting some other subsectors. Because it's a cross-cutting sort of any industrial sector. Now, upon knowing this, then we can to design. Designing. Nowadays, they have a computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing. They have a system now. You can just key in some, some information and the computer will, will assist you, will give you the whole thing. But during design, the first thing, this depends on the owner's interest or requirement. Requirements. What does the owner need? What does the owner require? You cannot design something from the blues. The owner must come, okay, I have this amount of money, I need a container ship. So in designing from the owners, because the owner, priority one for the owner is profitable ship. Profitable and economical vessel. Nobody is looking for, for a fuel gazelle, nobody is looking for a cost center project. Everyone is looking for a profitable project. So this is number one priority. So when you are, you are, you are designing a vessel for him, you mu it must be economical. It must be profitable so that he can recover the initial, the initial investment cost. And also, apart from the initial investment cost, it has to be, it has to, to, to have an optimum uh, running or operational cost. Nobody needs a fuel gazelle or a cost center project. And of course, it has to be maintainable. He's also looking for maintenance. The vessel must, must have some affordable uh, maintenance characteristics. You should not construct a vessel which is very exorbitant into maintaining it. And of course, the owners also look for future, look for future reselling, future reselling. This is what we call scrapping. The market for this one. He's looking. He's also looking for that. If this vessel, in case, you see, so he's looking for that. In case I need to resell this vessel, is it marketable? Can I sell it? easily or oh, do I do I need uh, to toil to sweat to get the market for this vessel? so he's looking for this the vessel has to be profitable and economical and of course when you are talking about profitable and economical it means to recover the initial investment cost and of course to have optimum running or operation cost and of course uh, uh, affordable maintenance and the future reselling that is uh, amongst the, the the, the, the issues the owner is looking for. But when you come to a designer now, the designer will have to ask the owner, the capital. First of all, the type of vessel, for example. Type of vessel. They, they have to ask him, what type of vessel is he looking for? And how, how much money the capital he has? How much money do you have? I have seen so much and I need a container vessel. And they need to know the size of of what size? Oh, maybe 4,000 TEUs. Yeah, maybe I need a container vessel of 4,000 TEUs, 20 feet equivalent units, a container ship. And then, what's the trading area? Why do you think asking trading area? Because probably this vessel is trading to ice prone areas. Then it has to be ice strengthened. And if the vessel is ice strengthened, it means more, more money because the plate has to be thicker. So all these things, start, that's why they, they have to, to know this. And of course, some even ports of call. Ports of call. Because, so as they can know. Should it be a gearless? When you say gearless, it means without crane. Some other ports, you don't need a crane. Especially Japan and some other developed countries, you don't need a crane. All container vessels, they don't have a crane. You just go there, the gantry crane do the job and you go. So they need to know these things. They need to know what type of vessel are you looking for, or you, you need to construct, they need to know the capital you have, they need to know the size of the vessel, they need to know, they, they need to know the trading area, because it can either be ice 
they, they have to know say, if it needs IC strengthen. Or sometimes some, some areas are, they have crazy seas all the year. You have choppy seas all the year, so they, they have to know that how strong the vessel should be. And of course the post of coal is amongst the, uh, the, the, the important issues for, for the designers to know. So after knowing this, of course they can use their programs. They can use their programs to get some, some essential information. After knowing this, they can use their programs to get some essential, we say, information provided by design include dimensions of the vessel. If you put there, you can just put some figures and it will give you the dimensions because it is a automated, it is it is a computer designing. Of course it will give you the displacement of the vessel. It means the total weight of the vessel including everything. It will give you the stability criteria, stability, stab stability, of course, of which the beam and depth are of paramount importance for this, for stability. You increase the beam, you increase the depth, you increase the stability. Uh, it's also, you will get also the preliminary, preliminary, general arrangement plan, GA plan, or score. When you put there, it will give you a GA plan, a preliminary. You're also going to get uh, principal uh, structural details. You will get it from there, from the computer. Amongst the information, of course, you're going to get it from the designing um, program. And of course, all these are are essential because when, you, when they, are, they need to construct a vessel after knowing all this information then they know uh, how will this vessel, they can even estimate from all these, they can even estimate the, 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 the duration, the time, the, the period for construction. They can estimate a lot, they can estimate the cost, they can estimate almost everything after knowing this. So after knowing, after now designing the ship, now you know okay this is the vessel I'm going to construct. Now what follows we need to know some construction parts or scantlings uh, because a ship needs a number of items to, to, to be assembled together to make a ship. And this, this includes the, the plate, number one. This includes the plate. So when you're saying, we come to this one, construction parts or scantlings. We say construction parts or scantlings. The number one we need, we need to have the plate of 10 millimeters, 12 depending on, no, as I can see now, it's getting, it is faint now. If you have another one, otherwise I'm going to use the red one. So it can be 10 millimeters or 12 depending which part are you putting that plane, that plate. You need to have the, the sections. Sections like the, the angle bars. Like the angle bars, like uh, the round bars, etc. You need to have the connections. Of course, when you are, you are constructing ship, you have to connect. And of course, the connection can be done by either riveting or by welding. Although revetting is, 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 is almost outdated now for the, for, the, for the old construction, but currently they are using welding. Why? Because with revetting you increase unnecessary weight because all those revets, for example, with the Titanic it was uh, I think around 3,000 kgs almost of revets only. So you are unnecessarily increasing the dead weight. And we need that dead weight for money because dead weight is all about money. So nowadays, mostly they, they connect by using welding. So you need to have the connections, you need uh, to have the, 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 the frames, and these frames you can have the, the longitudinal frames, and you can have the transverse, transverse frames. Longitudinal it means lengthwise, and the transverse it means across, port and starboard, right and left. 
you need to have uh, beams also. Most cases there, transverse beams, potent starboard. Uh, you need to have the pillars to support the decks. You need to have the pillars to support the decks. You need to have uh, um, what else? The pillars. You need to have the pipes. These pipes could be for for fuel oil, could be for lubricating oil, could be for fresh water, could be used as conduit for the wires, uh, electric wires. Wires could be for ballasting, for ballasting, could be for, for anything, just pipes. Of course, that's why we said, previously we said we need also plumbers because this is their job. They, 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 don't, they know the pipe work. You need to have marine plywood as well. Some areas need this for insulation for paneling and insulating the, 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 the bulkheads. For example, you cannot have a cabin with a, with a steel structure, otherwise you cannot sleep inside there. During the cold time, during the winter time, it's very difficult for you because it's, it's freezing, it's chilling inside. And during uh, the summer time, especially if you are in the UAE, it's very hot, you cannot even survive in that particular compartment. So it needs to be insulated with some plywood or something like that. You need to have, um, what else? We have to have the brackets as well. It's very important to have the brackets as well. Because all this, all this, of course, this is just a, it's just a short list because there is a lot to mention here. As we said, we just give you an overview of ship construction. So all these, play, all these parts plus others, because a plate itself, it cannot, a plate itself, it cannot by itself, it cannot by itself build the ship unless it is welded, it is connected, it is stiffened. Because if you take a plate, for example, a five meters plate or a 10 meters plate and you erect it like this, you will see it buckling like this. It needs to be stiffened, you put the stiffeners. It needs to be stiffened. In this case, we need the stiffeners. We need the stringers as well. For example, on the bow, you have a bow, especially for the fine vessels, like the frigates or something. When the vessel is pitching, because we're going to discuss about stresses, when the vessel is heavily pitching, there's what is known as pounding and slamming. This can happen for any vessel. But for the fine, for the fine bowed vessels, there is what is known as uh, uh, panting stress. When the vessel is immersed in water, the, the water loads, there's pressure exerted. The, pressure, uh, the water pressure is exerted on the plates, on the shell plating of that particular vessel, causing the in and out movement of that shell plating. And that is what we call panting. So this panting can be arrested by having the panting beams. You put the panting beams, you put the panting stringers, so that's why you can see everything plays its role. That's why you need to, and of course, that's why you need to stiffen even, to stiffen even this plate to make it more uh, straight and strong and stable. So all these, all these things are uh, parts which, need, uh, which are needed during ship construction. And of course, they have a role to play. For example, the beams, because with these plates, you have the side shell plates, port and starboard. You need to connect them. In between there, you need to have a, a transverse beam crossing from left and right. You need to have the side frames, like these ones you see. You need to have the side frames. So the side frames and the, and the deck beams are connected by the knee bracket. You connect them by the knee bracket, beam knee bracket, connecting the two. And of course these ones are connected to the tank top with the, uh, we say, um, side, with the tank side bracket. It is like this. They are connected to the tank top by tank side bracket. So everything you see needs a connecting member. That's why we need to to have to mention this. And of course, they all assistance in one way, apart from connecting the ship, apart from connecting the, 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 the structural members, but they also serve another purpose of uh, re resi resisting the stresses. For example, like the wrecking stresses, uh, panting, pounding and slamming, all this, we, of course, we're gonna see when we discuss about the stresses. So they are connecting members, but also they serve a certain purpose of arresting uh, the stresses when the ship is moving the ship it is the ship movements 
on the water which causes all these stresses. Because otherwise, even if when the ship is stationary, it can have a little bit of stresses regarding the weight of the vessel, balancing the weights and the, the, the upthrust. But when it is sailing in the water, there is a lot of forces which of course produce, which causes the, the stresses. And those stresses of course can cause even damage to the vessel, can lead even to damage, especially the torsional uh, stresses for the container ships, can even shear off, the vessel can even shear off. Now we have mentioned this, now when you come to, to assembly, assembly means, it's a, uh, basically means connecting the units together. When you're constructing a ship, they always don't construct it as a whole together. They construct some, some parts. So those parts, when you are collecting, when you are collecting them, when you are joining them, joining them together is what you call assembly. So you can have the assembling, you can have a minor assembly, you can have a sub-assembly, you can have unit assembly, and of course you can have the block assembly, these four stages. This one is only for some small parts of five by, two by five meters, and of course with a weight not exceeding two tons. But when you come to this one, it can be 12 by 12 meters unit, and of course, with the weight about 20 tons. And that's why you always need heavy lift cranes sometimes on the, do on the dockyard or shipyards. We have the unit assembly, of course, this one is a, it's a unit of about 60 tons. And of course, when you come to block assembly, this goes up to 200 tons. It goes up to 200, it means now it can either be two, it can either be two or three units, each of about that, that amount. So, in block assembly, there is a, a number of units joined together to form a block assembly. So as you're increasing the size, it means you have some few uh, units here, a little bit more, 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 most units put together to form an assembly. So this is a block assembly, so you can, you can connect them. Of course, you lift it by a crane and join them together to make it, can be the, the, the kill block or it can be anything, but when it comes to block assembly, it means that thing is huge. It means there is a number of other small units joined together, then you form, you form an assembly. Uh, then we come to the ship erection sequence. Of course, with ship erection sequence, uh, today let's, let, let's look at the general cargo. Let's have a case study with the general cargo. Ship erection sequence. Uh, we say ship erection sequence general cargo vessel general cargo vessel when we say erection sequence it means which part are you starting to construct when you're constructing ship which part are you starting first second third and last any ship constructed always they start with a kill and that's why there is a kill laying ceremony you see what kill laying ceremony people go take photos drink eat now laying a kill means it's a, it's a starting point of constructing the double bottom so you're gonna have you're gonna have uh, an outer bottom plate this one the downmost of course you have in a, you have the center gather there it's the center gather this is the outer bottom plate, or the kill, we say, it's the outer bottom, or we say, kill bottom plate. Then, you have some plate floor. You have a plate floor, you have a plate floor. Of course, you have the the intercostal, this one is an intercostal. You have the side, you have the side gather intercostal. This one is the center gather, this one here. It's the center gather. Then you have the intercostals. This one and that one. Intercostal, intercostal. And you have the inner bottom plating.
sometimes you call it tank top. And of course you have the margin plate here before you erect the vessel that way. So you will start with the, with the bottom. Always, you start with the bottom. And you have the, you have the, the, some, the, 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 the lightning holes, and you have the drain holes down, kind of the drain holes. You have the air holes, small ones, air holes, drain holes, air holes, you have the lightning hole, and of course you have the, you have the bracket on that side, and the bracket on that side, tank side, tank side bracket on the other side. But firstly, you will construct the bottom. This one will be number one, this bottom plating. This double bottom, we say double bottom. This structure we have drawn here is what we call the double bottom. We call it number one. It can either be port and starboard. One, two, it means double bottom. You can in either start constructing this side or that side, whatever. But you start with the double bottom. But secondly, after the double bottom, after the double bottom, one and two is for double bottom. One and two is for double bottom. Three is the, the middle part you see here. This whole plate you see is what we call the bulkhead. Like for example, this room is partitioned. There is this bulkhead and there is another bulkhead behind there. That wall and this wall we call transverse bulkheads. But this, this one and that one longitudinal bulkhead. So this will be number three. This one is the transverse bulkhead. Be number three. And, and after that you come to the, to the shell plating on the sides. The side frames and shell plating. This will be number three and four together, like here. You can call, uh, no, this is, will be four and five. Just like we put one and two, but it's the same thing. And this one, four and five, same thing. Shell plating on port side, shell plating on the starboard side. Eh? And of course, shell plating, to me, inside you have the side frames. You cannot have the shell plating without the side frames. That is, now, because it's a general cargo ship, Because it's a general cargo ship, we are going to have uh, what is known as a twin deck. Because the general cargo ship has twin deck, you have a low hold behind, down, and you have a twin deck on on the upper on the upper side. So here on the beige plate, this will be the sixth one. Here it will be the sixth one. You, you know why? Because if you if you cover this one, how will you going to erect these ones? Because if you cover this one before, how are you going to erect these ones? It means they will cause buckling during welding. And that's why they leave this side open first until they finish the other side, then they come to cover this side so that they should not tamper with the welding uh, activity. So this one is number seven, number seven, of course we're gonna name this one is a twin deck sides. Twin deck side, twin deck port side, twin deck, twin deck starboard side. Shell plating starboard side, shell plating port side. Double bottom port side, double bottom starboard side. Uh, uh, kill plate port side, kill plate starboard side. Then it comes to the, in between here you, there is a, an opening. Of course you put a pantoon. This one is a twin deck center. Number eight is a twin, twin deck center. Because you have the sides and this one is removable. You can, after you finish loading the low hold, you take this pontoon and cover. You cover and again you start loading on, the, on top. You start loading on top. Then thereafter, we continue with the erection. Uh, this one I have to squeeze it. Then it comes Same like here. I'm not a good artist, but at least you get a picture of what I'm, I'm talking about. So we have number nine here and number nine there. And you have, of course, this number 10. And uh, 
Thereafter, then you have the the H on top, which is number number eleven. This is the erection sequence. So, when constructing the ship, this is the sequence to be followed. They will start with the double bottom. They will start with the key laying. Put the intercostal. Put the key plating. The inner, the the, the, the outer bottom, the inner bottom, and they put the bulkhead, the transverse bulkhead. Then they put the side side frames and the shell plating, side frame and shell plating. And they put the side, the, the, the twin deck. Twin deck, you put twin deck side, port side, twin deck starboard side. And of course, you have the deck. This one is deck. Deck port side, deck starboard side. And you have there, you have the, 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 the deck center, main deck center. This main deck port, main deck starboard. Then twin deck port, twin deck, twin deck starboard, twin deck center, where there's an opening, you can close and open. Here also, you can close and open the hatch. And of course, you have the hatch coming on the sides. This is how, generally, in a nutshell, how um, a ship is constructed. But this one is, is a general overview. It takes, there is a lot of some other parts there. This one, if you view it as a, as a, as a midsection, but if you put it in a, this one is a midsection. Midsection, but otherwise the ship should look like, if you put it like a, this is how, this is how it should look like. So you, you're going to have a lot of these country, a lot of these pieces, transfer pieces. You can have this one, this first line, this is the first line, another line there, another line there, another line there, a number depending on the length of that vessel. This is just one piece and another one, another one, another to make a complete, to make a complete length overall um, of a vessel. But this one is a midsection. If you cut it like this class, if you cut it in the middle and you look like this. This is the picture you are going to see. This is how the, the ship is generally uh, constructed. And now we come to the stresses. We come to the stresses. The stresses, these are simply forces. The force, uh, the, the, the force, uh, either wave action or stress. Or the sea in general, exerted on the ship's hull. Forces exerted on the ship's hull or parts. And we have different kind of stresses. We have the, as we say, we have the longitudinal stresses, lengthwise. So we have the transverse stresses across, and of course we have localized stresses. Stresses. One, we have longitudinal. Longitudinal, this one includes hogging and sagging. With the hogging, you have a vessel. You know a vessel is like a beam. It's like a beam. A beam. If you put a beam and hang it, if you put a weight pressing down here and another weight pressing down there, and there's another force pointing up there, could be a wave action or something. These forces, of course, there is a neutral axis in the middle. This force, this force we tend to be pulling downwards here, that one pulling force one, force two, and this force three is pushing up. So what happens, this thing will tend to, we tend to bend, it will bend upwards. Bending upwards is what we call hogging. And if you reverse the forces, the same. Ship, as we said, is like a beam. If you reverse the forces, this force is acting, is pushing up, and this one is pushing up, and another force is pushing down. This is force one, force two, and force three. It means it will tend to, to curve like this. This is what we call sagging. And now, amongst the structural members we even mentioned when we, we were discussing about ship construction, that's why you see the bottom, the double bottom is always strengthened. We have, as we said, on the, on the frames, we have the longitudinal frames, we have the transverse frames, we have the bulkheads, and we have a solid floor or it can be an open floor. But all these, the floors, you're talking about the double bottoms, are, are strengthened to overcome, to overcome hogging and sagging. And of course, the longitudinal frames also, they overcome hogging, sagging. The 
bulk heads also they absorb some of the hogging and sagging. So that's why we have these structural members as I said before. They serve some purposes for construction, but also they they are trying to to, to resist or to reduce the effects of uh, stresses. When we come to the transfer stresses, these ones are transfers stresses. Firstly, we have the retching stresses, and we have the torsional torsional stresses. Mostly, mostly the torsional and the uh, raking stresses are more pronounced to the container ships. Why? Because they carry the cargo. And those, those boxes, those containers, each one has its individual weight. And when the ship is rolling, of course this one is more pron pronounced during rolling. While hogging and sagging is when the ship is between the waves. For example, you have a crest here and you have a crest there and you have a trough here. So if the ship is if the ship is between the what do you think will happen? This will be pushed up and the other one will be pushed up and this one it will what? It will sag. And if the and if the wave is if the ship is like this and you have the wave here and the trough on the other side it means it will hold. But with the transverse Transverse, uh, transverse um, uh, stresses, raking and uh, raking, torsional, and of course, you can have also uh, panting to a certain extent. Panting to a certain extent, but mostly raking, raking. This also sometimes comes to the localized stresses. But in most cases, we have the raking and the torsional stresses which are mainly caused by rolling because this panting is not caused by rolling this one is caused by by pitching by pitching or even when the ship is sailing as long as it is immersed in water the pressure load is causing the 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 the, 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 the plate to be uh, moving in and out so with the wrecking stresses how do we arrest we mentioned during construction, we have the bulkheads. We mentioned the bulkheads. When we're talking about a plate, it includes the bulkheads. The bulkheads are amongst the plates. It also helps to, to, to reduce the raking stresses. We have the beam knee brackets. When you are connecting to, you are connecting the shell plating or the, the side frames with the, with the deck beams, you are connecting them with the beam knee bracket. And that bracket is also, is also used to you have uh, a construction of this type. So these brackets around here, you put the brackets around here on the, on the corners around here, these brackets, they also absorb the raking stresses. They reduce, they reduce the torsional effect of that. Uh, of the of the of the structures, also the double bottom helps also to absorb raking stresses because they prevent the hull from twisting. With a strong double bottom, the hull cannot twist. So it's amongst the the, the structural members which uh, resist it, uh, that kind of uh, stresses. When we come to panting, this panting, as we said, if the if the bow is immersed in water, it it it, it experiences some some forces pushing it on the sides. And these forces can be countered by panting beams. You put the panting beams, you have the panting beams to, to arrest the, the stresses. And uh, you have the panting stringers as well. Panting stringers also assist to top up. Uh, and the bulkheads, because it is like this and there is a bulkhead there. The bulkheads also assist to absorb the panting uh, stresses. When we come to the, of course, there is also what we what, what is known as uh, pounding and slamming. Pounding and slamming is, is during pitching. When the ship is pitching heavily, the low side, the forward, the forward part of the ship, on the low, the low side of the ship, is experiencing some hammering sort of forces. That is what we call pounding and slamming. That one is absorbed by strengthening strengthening the, the double bottom. If the double bottom is well strengthened, then those, those kind of uh, localized, uh, so those kind of localized stresses are uh, minimized.
of course you minimize the, the effects of those uh, uh, stresses and of course we have with the localized stresses we have also the where where we, we, we put the deck machineries where we put the deck machineries of course when they operate for example if you operate a crane the vibration of a crane introduces some localized stresses the main engine also where the propeller shaft is rotating causing some vibration that part around is also experiencing some localized stresses uh, like uh, the the boiler room as well where you put the boiler and it has to be strengthened because of their localized uh, stresses so um, this is at least in a nutshell when you're talking about ship construction when you're talking about the shipbuilding industry this is at least this is a picture at least someone should visualize should have at least a glimpse of what we have been discussing all through and uh, after saying this uh, let us come to the end of our um, discussion for today uh, see you next time my name once again is captain concept gawe from azam marine the home of hospitality and comfort nimetumia tu ndugu mtazamaji umejifunza mambo mengi sana kuhusiana na ship construction and stresses vitu vingi umejifunza ameona kwanza alizungumzia introduction lakini akazungumzia what is a ship alizungumzia meli ni kitu gani huko lakini sio tu hilo akazungumzia masuala mbalimbali yanayohusiana na ship building and azungumzia ship building process akutoka hapo akazungumzia ship stresses na vitu vingi ambavyo mwanangu mtazamaji ni mtume wetu umejifunza vitu vingi sana katika kipindi chetu cha safari salama na merekebo ndugu mtazamaji wa kipindi chetu cha safari salama na merekebo tunashukuru sana chuo cha Dar es Salaam Maritime Institute ama DMY kuweza kutupa mchango mkubwa katika kipindi chetu lakini sio hiyo tunashukuru pia tasa tunashukuru na ZMWay na wadau kwa ujumla ambao umeleza mnatupa mchango mkubwa katika kipindi chetu cha safari salama na amerikebo tunasema asante sana karibu tena kipindi kijacho ndugu mtazamaji wetu usisahau kubonyeza subscribe na alama kengele ili uweze kupata mwendelezo wa vipindi vyetu vya mara kwa mara ulikuwa na mimi captain Josiah Mwakibuja kutoka Jorem Trading Company mm.